This unusually strange but somehow beautiful vehicle is called M551 Sheridan tank. This is an armored reconnaissance and airborne assault vehicle capable of not only swimming but also being launched from an airplane in order for it to reposition itself very quickly. Today we're going to be taking a look at this tank from a historical perspective and also talk a little bit about the mission where this tank has participated and did quite admirably. Welcome to What The Math. And first of all, well, this is actually a light tank. This is a tank that would probably not withstand attacks from any of the tanks you see on the screen. Uh, but nevertheless, it actually uh, did quite well at first and was used in three conflicts. It was used uh, during the Vietnam War. It was also used during the Operation Desert Shield, um, during the attack of uh, Iraq on Kuwait, and uh, also in uh, the invasion of Panama. And this particular tank was really designed to be very mobile and to be landed by parachute but also to swim across rivers. Now this is actually something that United States borrowed from the Soviet Union because they realized Soviets were producing PT-76 tank that was actually amphibious and light and was able to traverse ground very easily and so they actually wanted to create their own design that was also able to do the same. And from a technological perspective, this tank was very advanced. It had a very, very unique and very um, cool looking cannon, uh, or turret in this case, able to launch both um, heat ammunition, but also the advanced uh, anti-tank guided missiles that were known as MGM-51 Shilele. Although I'm pretty sure I mispronounced that because it's an Irish word that I don't really know how to pronounce well. And on top of that, it had very unique aluminum armor and it also had very, very unique targeting and optical system as well. And and even though this tank was uh, only conceived in 1967, it was already in production and in combat by January 1969, where it actually helped the US troops during the Vietnam War. And this is actually where this tank saw the most action, and uh, technically it was actually only used as an armored machine gun and not really as a tank. And mostly because uh, US actually realized that uh, the missiles that were produced for this tank were not very, very successful. And every time they were fired, unfortunately, the missile guidance system actually uh, couldn't function well because of the vibrations produced by firing the cannon. So only the heat ammunition or the uh, machine gun were actually used in Vietnam. However, during the Gulf War, this tank was on the front lines trying to protect the Saudi border uh, when the Iraqi forces invaded. And the first pictures that came out of the Gulf War were actually of this tank. And basically the headlines said something along the lines of, you know, US was ready to protect the Saudi allies. But the thing is, this tank specifically would not, very, uh, would not perform very well against the um, Iraqi forces because the Iraqis were attacking using T-72 tanks, which uh, this tank would in no way be able to damage or destroy and would most likely lose against them. But uh, during the Gulf War, this tank did use at least six of its um, anti-tank guided missiles to destroy uh, the Iraqi T-55 tanks. But unfortunately, that's all uh, it ever did. So in that sense, it really wasn't that functional uh, in, during the Gulf War and other tanks had to do most of the work. And although the missiles that were produced for this tank were a disappointment, eventually a similar type of a missile was actually used uh, on M2 Bradley tank, which actually is very successful and was actively used in the Gulf War as well. So M551 Sheridan actually served as a kind of a testing platform for the MGM-51 Shilele anti-tank missiles, which were later upgraded and used in other vehicles as well. Now, unfortunately for this tank, it was actually not really exported well either because many countries looked at it and said they didn't really need it. As a matter of fact, Australian Army trialed this tank uh, for about two years between 67 and 68, but judged that it was really not meeting their requirements and so basically it was rejected by the Aussies. And so many countries that wanted to purchase American tanks instead purchased tanks like M48 and M60, but uh, refused to buy the M551 Sheridan. And actually, it's kind of hard to blame them because, um, unfortunately, this tank had a lot of technical problems. As a matter of fact, and, and, and except for the fact that it was hard to fire the uh, guided missiles, 
This tank was also very vulnerable to mines and most of the propelled grenades would actually easily penetrate it. Because its armor was made of aluminum and because of its, it was so thin, the majority of propelled grenades could easily puncture the armor and basically kill everyone on the inside. And because of the aluminum structure and because of the way that ammunition was actually stored on the bottom of the tank, every time the tank actually passed over a mine and the mine exploded, most of these tanks would actually not only uh, be destroyed but actually would catch fire and burn everything on the inside. So many of these tanks uh, actually caught fire during the Vietnam War and many of them basically burned their crew alive and would actually melt to, to the point where the entire tank was actually deformed. On top of that, this tank uh, had a very, very slow rate of fire and could only fire about two or possibly three shells per minute. And the only saving grace for this tank during the Vietnam War was that it uh, it was actually really good at traversing mud and rivers, and so it didn't really get stuck in mud as much as other tanks. But except for mobility, there was actually very little positive about this tank. As a matter of fact, it was also known for breaking um, ribs of their commanders because of the way cannon performed, it would sometimes recoil and actually break the ribs if the commander was actually using his seat. And the other problem was that the driver had very limited vision when the turret was in a certain position, so in between the driver problems and the commander problems, this tank wasn't actually that good. But nevertheless, the US still used these tanks actively, and uh, the most impressive use, I think, was during the Operation Just Cause, which was the invasion of Panama, where uh, 14 of these tanks were used, and actually some of them were dropped from the airplanes and were the first uh, US tanks to experience this airdrop feature. But unfortunately, two of the airdrop tanks were actually destroyed on landing. And so only 12 tanks then participated in the invasion. But during the invasion, they actually did pretty uh, valiantly and were able to provide support during the uh, capture of high-value targets when Panama City was invaded and most of the important locations were taken by the US forces. And so I think this is what we're going to do in the next video. We're going to try to recreate the invasion of Panama and talk a little bit about this operation and why the US decided to invade Panama. And so I think that's all I wanted to say about M551 Sheridan. Even though it's a cool looking tank, unfortunately, technologically speaking, it wasn't really that good. And this is why it was actually retired from the US forces and is no longer used anywhere except for as a kind of a practice target. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something about this tank. And in the next video, we're going to try to recreate an important historical mission and talk more about the history of this tank and how it influenced the world. If you've enjoyed this video or if you enjoy learning things by watching video games, please subscribe to this channel if you still haven't and also like this video. And don't forget to share this video with your friends who may enjoy learning things as well or enjoy watching different war games. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next video, game you later guys and bye bye.